Hi, my name is Frank Walker, and I was born in 1967 with prune belly syndrome, which is a rare muscular condition where, in most cases, you are born completely without abdominal muscles or some variation of that. I was born completely without them, and it also led to other issues such as uh, urinary and kidney. And um, when I was 15 years old, my doctor told me about a possibility of a surgery where they would take muscles from my legs and put them into my stomach to replace the missing muscles. And it had not been done for the purpose of prune belly syndrome. So it was kind of a new thing for that reason. And it was worth the, it was worth the, the attempt to do it. And this is the man who did it. His name is Dr. Ralph Gurr. And um, I wanted to give him the opportunity to talk about what he did with that and what other things he's known for. And uh, that's what we're going to do. So this is Dr. Alper, and he's going to talk. <laughs> Hello, yes, I was, <clears throat> I was fortunate enough to, to meet Frank when he was a youngster. <laughs> and his uh, pediatrician uh, had heard that uh, we were doing uh, operations on the abdominal wall uh, in adults and I had a, f a fairly long experience of this. Mostly it was based on my uh, in my tr medical training where I was very uh, very taken with the anatomy of the uh, of, of people and in, in, the, in the early days in the, of the cadavers and I, at the age of about 15, I became a demonstrator of anatomy while I was a medical student because I was uh, so impressed by this, by the, the way that things were put together. And as, as time went on I, and I became a surgeon, uh, that was well tied up with the anatomy and made it much easier to practice. And one day, in fact, I was uh, sitting somewhat morosely looking at the cadaver's muscles that I had dissected and the students had dissected and then I went off to do a clinic for ulcers of the leg and while I was doing the clinic I, f I found that gee there must be some use for these muscles that I keep dissecting out, mm. maybe I can close these ulcers. And it turned out to be so, yes I could close the ulcers. And then, as I as I found that I could move muscles without causing ill effects, and and making them take the place of muscles that were either not there or had been damaged or, or had been lost, and it was under this setting that uh, um, Dr. Carillus approached me one day to say, "I see you are doing a lot of transpositions of muscles." people with hernias of the abdominal wall. That's, that's weakness of the abdominal wall. Usually the abdominal wall has either collapsed or been operated on, but there are defects there and it leads to, to a lot of effects. The abdominal wall is a very important set of muscles, not thought of much, but it makes it do a lot of good things like emptying the bowels, having babies, and protective, and so on. And so I was, when I met Frank first, I was well versed in transposing muscles from the thigh and turning them on, on themselves uh, upwards to the abdominal wall and replacing the muscles. And we did this um, on a series, uh, firstly I did them on patients I must say, and then I went on to do them on uh, something that you may or may not be familiar with. Beagle dogs, beautiful as they are, mm -hmm. are dogs that are, have a predilection for getting uh, hernias. And um, I uh, operate on quite a lot of them and, and fix these hernias because otherwise they're going to be destroyed. And the results are very good in the dogs. And, when I, and then I was doing them on, on, on humans and did a lot of a lot of work like this, but Frank was the first pediatric case that came along, and due to good graces of Dr. Carillus, 
who recognized that maybe there's something that could be done here because it was it's, one of the, the symptoms of a, in a young person is that um, an adult as well you can't use the muscles you have great trouble getting yourself up from the ground mm -hmm. and doing all sorts of other things like make it passing urine, passing babies, etc, etc. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a big defect not to have muscles. And so we proceeded with Frank and transposed muscles from the thigh and uh, turned them on themselves and passed them upwards. And uh, we, can, we will show you a diagram of that and what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And, and suture the muscles into the abdominal wall. And um, I spent about 50 years in surgical practice and I, I did the same operation on many people. Usually uh, they were adults who had, had either lost their muscles or had operations and so on and found it to be highly effective. And uh, F Frank, Frank was an outstanding success there's no question it helped to have a fireball to operate on who could do all these things, but he, he, would, be a, he would be a great training man uh, for people who have fruit and belly. Um, and so, so the, the disappointment of all, of, in, in my eyes has been <coughs> the uh, inability of other doctors to see the same benefits that would arise from this operation. There are one or two that we have located in the United States who's, who seem to be doing it in uh, this operation in a very small numbers of cases, but surely there must be many people in the world who have this condition. If you put all the, all the races together, there must be many cases who are suffering for no good reason and the doctors are not aware of it or don't want to do it because they don't know about it and it is with, with this premise of helping both the doctors and the patients that we are meeting and discussing the situation to try to find ways where we can get this, show, get this um, place before the world in general actually. Mm -hmm. the, the people that really would, uh, would be the ones to go to would be the World Health Organization but somehow we have not made, we have not managed to make any inroads in that direction. <coughs> so, in, so in summary, we have an operation which is proved, because uh, I've done many, many operations in adults, not particularly prune pretty, but, but it's the same principle. The muscle is missing, let's replace the muscle. And um, if we could, if we could uh, publicize this and get big organizations to take it over, we will be doing a, a lot of good for a lot of young people and then old people who, will, who are not benefiting. Mm. See? <laughs> I can say more, but I'm really yeah, stopping no, for the moment to see okay. any questions that I can, uh, that are something I left out. Or. I'm also trying to think too, there are, um, I'm, I'm trying to remember questions that were asked of you at the convention that we could try to talk about too. Is it, we're still going? I remember that one, one woman at the convention asked you, she had donated a kidney to her son. And I think she also asked, is it possible to donate muscle? And I think, I think either you or Dr. Du Bois said no, if I remember right. Oh, yes. Do you remember yes. that? No, I, didn't, I didn't remember that. Uh. I didn't remember that. Um, don't take this down just yet. <laughs>